I've got a nice calculus problem which from the outside looks very, very intimidating, but once you break it down with some of the more difficult concepts from a differential and integral calculus class, you'll see that the solution is quite simple. And I think problems like this are really nice for testing your holistic understanding of the subject and just as a practice to keep your cool when things look difficult at first. Okay, so let's see what we have. We've got this function f of x, which is defined in terms of an integral. So it's the integral from 1 to x of 1 over the square root of x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1 dx. And the fact that we've got this crazy function inside of the integral gives us a hint to whatever we're going to do here, we will not get a closed, and what I mean by closed is a form of f of x without an integral. Because in fact, there probably isn't one. Now before we really look at our goal, I want to point out that f here is increasing, but since it's increasing, it's one to one, and since it's one to one, it's invertible in the appropriate places. Okay, so our goal here is to find f inverse prime evaluated at zero. So in other words, we want to calculate the derivative of the inverse function and then evaluate that at zero. Okay, so let's maybe say our first goal is just to describe what is f inverse prime prime of x. Okay, so let's maybe see how we could do that. I'm going to introduce a little bit of notation first. So let's start by setting y equal to f inverse of x. And notice that means our goal can be written as I want to find y prime. Well, maybe I'll apply f to both sides of this. So I'm working with a function instead of the inverse function. That'll leave me with f evaluated at y equals x. Because by the function inverse function relationship, that will simplify down to the identity function, which is x. Next, I'll take the derivative both sides using implicit differentiation on the left-hand side. So let's see, using implicit differentiation or really the chain rule on the left-hand side, that'll leave me with f prime of y times y prime equals the derivative of x is 1. Okay, but now let's solve this for y prime, and we'll see that we get y prime is equal to, let's see, 1 over f prime evaluated at y, but let's recall that y is f inverse evaluated at x. Okay, but now rewriting this using the fact that y is f inverse of x, that tells us that we have f inverse of x prime is equal to 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. And now this is maybe a formula that you're somewhat familiar with. It's presented in a differential calculus class when you're working on derivatives of inverse functions. So from here, we want to apply this formula to our situation. So let's do that. So let's maybe point that out. So for us, what do we have? Our goal is to find the derivative of f inverse evaluated at zero. Okay, but by this formula up here, that will be one over f prime evaluated at f inverse of zero. But luckily, zero is kind of the easiest thing to evaluate f inverse at in this case. Because what we want to do here to figure this value out is we need to solve the following equation. We need to find out when f of x equals 0. So in other words, we want to find x for where the integral from 1 to x of 1 over the square root of all of that stuff equals 0. But since this is a 1 to 1 function, that only occurs one time kind of the most obvious place that it occurs is when x equals 1 because then we've got an integral from 1 to 1 which is clearly 0. So here I'll put that means that x is equal to 1. But that means we need 1 over f prime evaluated at 1. 
But let's notice that f prime is actually pretty easy to calculate, and that's by the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. The derivative of f will just be this function that is inside the integral. In other words, it is the integrand. So what we have here is one over, one over, this guy evaluated at x equals one. So we have the square root of one plus two plus one, but that's gonna be the square root of four, which is two. We have one over a half, which is clearly equal to two. And that's our final answer. And that's a good place to stop.